I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Science fiction is a genre that has existed for centuries. Many consider the first sci-fi novel to be the satirist Lucian of Samasta's A True Story with elements of space travel and aliens. Ever since, science fiction has popped up through literary history, appearing in 1001 Nights and experiencing an acceleration during the scientific revolution and the Age of Enlightenment with works such as Kepler's Dream and Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. Simply put, when there is science, there is science fiction, and in the past 150 years, there have been stories about artificial intelligences. The earliest appearance of AIs in science fiction is Samuel Butler's 1872 novel, Erathon, with arguments made that even Mary Shelley's Frankenstein's monster was an artificial intelligence. Ever since, AIs have been a common trope in science fiction, with my personal favorites being AM from Harlan Ellison's I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, 2001 A Space Odyssey's Howl, and The Replicants from Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. However, the pervasive themes of artificial intelligence are not without influence on society, especially as science fiction becomes more and more popular throughout the 20th century. We are now seeing an influence of these fictional AIs, once dreamt up as hypothetical solutions to problems, on the development of real-life intelligent systems. Problems are attempted to be solved the sci-fi way, rather than the best way. There is also an effect of what I will from now on refer to as sci-fi AIs on the media coverage around real-life AIs, discussing themes of AI takeover, job loss, and extreme utopias or dystopias. Let's explore why that's an issue. Often, an AI is introduced to solve a problem that no one really had, being unaware of context and market, and grossly mishandles them in the process. An excellent recent example of this is Genderify, an AI developed to identify someone's gender based on their name, email address, or username. While the concept feels like something straight out of a science fiction novel, the reception was less than great. The service unsurprisingly suffered from severe gender bias. This is a great example of a company trying to make an AI more like a human, like in a sci-fi movie, and it blowing up in their face. Combine this with the question of why a service would even be needed, in a society becoming more and more fluid in gender identification and attempting to reduce gender biases, leads us to the natural conclusion of the company shutting down in just a week. Another misuse of AIs is online customer service chatbots which are becoming more and more common on various websites, such as Air New Zealand's Oscar. These chatbots don't really react well to any questions other than what they are specifically asked to do, which begs the question of, what's the point? All that these chatbots can do can be achieved with a simple frequently asked questions page on the company's website. An argument can be made that the chatbots are trying to emulate humans without having to be paid as much or anything at all but they don't really do that very well either. Another great example of this is the introduction of an AI into a situation where the human touch is required. In early 2020, New Zealand police unveiled their first AI cop, Ella. Not exactly Robocop, Ella is designed to answer questions and can take crime reports or connect a user to a call center. Although Ella can be used to contact a human, she is no replacement for one, and removes the humanity from a situation where people may be distressed. Ella also suffers from many of the same failures of online chatbots. Again, an argument can be made that the AI can emulate humans without having to be paid as much, but if there needs to be a human present behind the scenes regardless, what is the point? Sci-fi AI also has a major influence on how AI is represented in the media and is marketed towards the general public. AI is exciting, futuristic technology that gets a lot of media coverage, even more so in technology-themed publications. But it is often represented with large, fearful questions about losing control of our AIs, job loss, and ethical problems. Articles like these create unnecessary fear around AI and a mistrust of future tech overall. 
Realistically, these are non-issues with currently developed AIs. We are still a long way away from any of these problems becoming a reality, if they ever even become problems at all. In a sense, science fiction limits us. To develop solutions to problems in such a predefined sci-fi way holds us back creatively and decelerates innovation, both very human things. Humans need to think further outside of the box to solve our problems and need to work in a more contextually aware manner to identify our real problems and solve them in the best way possible. AI is a powerful tool with countless uses, but challenge lies in identifying where it should be implemented and how. Sci-fi AIs, of course, do occasionally have useful and successful applications. The robot vacuums featured in the TV cartoon The Jetsons are now a reality in the form of the well-known Roombas, an AI-powered disc-shaped vacuum, which work pretty well, most of the time. Voice assistants such as Alexa and Google Home can also emulate AIs such as HAL on a surface level. Information can be retrieved, basic conversation can be made, and you can control basic things around your house, like lights or speakers. As limited as they are, do they really need to be much more complicated? The point here is sci-fi AIs can be used effectively, but we should not be limited by the bounds of science fiction. The focus needs to be brought away from creating a sci-fi utopia and brought towards creating a better today, on our own terms, with its roots based in reality.